Hi, I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Thank you for viewing. The most common question asked in the paranormal field is, what is a ghost? Sure, we all know those campfire stories. We all know of the experiences of people have of banging in the night or doors mysteriously closing by themselves, correct? But I'm going to take these stories further. Go into the where, the why, the how. These people that once lived are now in this ghostly apparitional state. So every story that I tell will be a true story. Every story that I tell will be recorded by other paranormal investigators where there is real evidence out there if you wish to go and find it. So buckle up guys, grab your pillow and let's start the story. Tonight, we're going to the country of Chile. Now, for those who don't know where Chile is, it's down in the South America's countries, and it's just bordering onto Argentina. If you go to the city of Santiago, about 50 miles northeast of Santiago, there is a little place called La Pava. La Pava, its history is that it's a little town built on the side of the Chilean Andes. And every year, obviously, it gets a lot of snow. So you can imagine what life in this town would be like. The people there would be um, acclimatised to the fact that it is severely cold. It would get the severe winds and the severe chop changes in the weather due to the um, winds and the gusts of the clouds coming in to form the, the snow fronts. So this little town, which is situated on the side of the mountainous range, you can imagine what life in this town would be like. Just to walk up your street, you'd be trudging up a hill, mountainous range. To go across to see your friends on the other side of your own street where you live, you would be trudging through four foot of snow, just to get across the road. So it's very harsh. It's very torren um, torrential um, when it does snow and rain in this region. So the story tonight involves a lady called Lola. She lived in this city and she had a son. So they would have been known to a lot of people in this township. She actually even dated one of the men who owned a restaurant in this township. So there are testimonies out there that she actually did exist. So one day she decided to take her son skiing. So they climbed up the side of the mountain, probably taking hours to get there before ski lifts were invented. And they proceeded to start skiing down the slopes. But as they were started skiing, the fog started coming in. Now, if you know what fog does when it's around snow and on mountainous ranges, it builds at the bottom of the gully in the valley and it comes up. And when this fog comes up, you cannot see through it. And also, because it makes the air so silent, when you scream, no one hears you scream. So as Lola and her son were skiing down this slope with the fog raising up towards them, they got separated. Lola freaked out. She would have been hysterical wondering where her son was, knowing that every time she screamed out his name, he wouldn't be able to hear her through that fog, creating that denseness in the air. <clears throat> so Lola panicked. She's frantic 
She's very scared, searching everywhere, calling out her son's name. Where are you? Are you okay? What is his health and his wellness being like? It would have been very, very apparent in her brain at this point. So she searched and she searched for her son. So the next report that comes from this story is that a man was in a search party to look for her. It was obviously her son had gone back to the town and had told someone and got the alert going that her, his mother was missing. So this man joined the search party and he went out. And you can imagine the terrain on the side of this mountain with all the rock, rock outlooks and the outbreaks of rocks making it very dangerous to walk through. So he came to a part where he looked down over this rock face and there at the bottom he saw Lola lying there. So he's climbed down to where she was and he noticed all the blood and all the cuts and obviously other injuries that she had had when she fell off the cliff face into this valley where, she, where he found her. So he picked her up and carefully carried her back to his cabin in the city, in the township where he lived. I can't really call it a city. So he took her inside and he put her on his bed and he realised after he looked at her that she needed medical help. So he went in search of the doctor. He left her alone for about half an hour while he went and found the doctor. The doctor and himself returned to this man's cabin. They went inside and there was no Lola. The bed where she laid was empty. But the blood from her injuries was still all over the sheets. So they searched the cabin and she was not inside. So they went out the doorway to see if they could track her footsteps in the snow. But there were no footsteps in the snow. They went out the back and around the cabin to see if she'd come out a window or any other exit points out of this cabin. And there was no footsteps in the snow. So since that report... There have been so many people that will be skiing down the slopes in the Chilean Andes in this little town of Parav La Parva. They'll see her wailing and shrieking her son's name out to the point now that they call her Lo La Lorona, the wailing woman in search of her son. She has actually approached people where she is screaming out for help. Can you help me find my son? And then as they start searching for her son, she mysteriously disappears. People around where she, was dis where she disappeared from on the sl ski slope have heard her screams. They've heard her screaming out her son's name. They've seen her apparition still in that endless search for her son. So why does her ghost remain? Because at the time of her death, she was filled with such fear, such determination, where she had to pursue what she thought was right by looking for her son. So even when her own body died, fell off that mountainous range, her spirit, her consciousness, could not stop searching for her son. So if ever you are in the little Chilean town of La Pava, don't be amazed or surprised if you do get approached by a woman who is frantic and she asks you if you've seen her son. Good story, guys. If you've liked this one, please share it and press the like button down below. Talk to you all next week. Bye.